Hello my beautiful weirdos, welcome back to Pretty Scary, the channel where I bring you easy to follow, budget friendly makeup tutorials that you can recreate at home. Now firstly I just want to say I'm very well aware that there has been a huge gap in my channel. I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for sticking with me, staying as my subscribers and continuing to watch the content that's already here. As some of you may know if you follow me on my other social media I've had some massive tech issues. My laptop died on me half through the third days of Halloween and I lost a load of data which I hadn't backed up. So lesson very much learned there, back up your data kids. Anyway I then had to source and buy a new laptop after spending and wasting really many days trying to sort out my old laptop and try and retrieve stuff and try and get it working which I couldn't do. So yeah I had to source and buy a new laptop then I had to source and learn new editing software because the editing software that I had was no longer available and get used to a new laptop and yeah for somebody like me that was a very challenging challenging thing to do and I've also had a lot of personal stuff very serious personal stuff going on which I may feel able to share with you at some point but I just want to say thank you thank you thank you again from the bottom of my heart for sticking with me because I know that there hasn't been anything going on on my channel and I've really missed you all and really missed creating stuff for you all so I am back and here is one of my 31 days of Halloween I didn't get a chance to post this is my wonderful zombie bride if you would like to know how to recreate this look then keep watching if you are new here and you haven't yet subscribed please hit that subscribe button below and without much further ado here is how I recreated recreated here is how I created even this look things first time to make the headdress I just took a cheap headband which I got from the pound shop or dollar store in America and I ordered some fake flowers from eBay which had bendable stems and I basically just wound them around the headband and then use a little bit of hot glue just to secure those in place I shall dig out my link for the by the seller even that I bought this from um, you can tell it's a while since I've done a voiceover, I actually can't talk. Um, it's also quite hard to do the voiceover on my new PC because I have to lean right in close to the webcam in order to record, which means I can't fully see what's going on on the screen, but I am working on getting a microphone, so yeah. Anyway, so I just worked out where I wanted the flowers to be and made sure I had a nice even spread of the colours and of the kind of shapes and sizes of the roses and once I was happy and I put it to one side and I decided to make some maggots. I crafted the maggots just with my fingers and nails out of Crayola Mod oh, Model Magic which is a soft air drying clay. It dries to a foamy consistency and is nice and light so you can make pieces to stick to your face. And then after a quick cake break, I then took some Snazaroo cream white base paint and just stippled that over any areas that will be on show, aside from the area where there will be the exposed eye socket. After powdering that with some translucent powder, I then took a sponge and pulled some bits out of it to make a nice texture. This is great for creating veins. I then dipped it into some very watered down black face paint dabbed it on a tissue and then just started stippling it all over that same exposed skin and as you can see it creates a nice kind of moldy veiny texture on the skin without any hassle whatsoever. I also used a clean sponge just to dab over those areas once I'd applied the colour just to disperse it and make it look a little bit more like it was under the skin rather than just being on top and being too strong. Then I took some deep grey eyeshadow and started carving out my features. As you are a corpse bride, you'll want to be nice and hollow. 
So I carved out my cheekbones and around the one eye. There's no point in doing the other eye, obviously, because it's going to be covered. I also did some around my mouth just to start making me look a little bit mouldy and just to define all my facial features. And then around my nose as well. If you apply a white face paint, you can look a bit flat, so it's always good to bring back in some shape and contour. I also did the same thing along my collarbones. And also in the hollows of my neck. Then deepened up the shadows with my favourite shadow tone, Deep Night by Laura Mercier. It's really dark. I think it's going to rain again. Once I felt I looked sufficiently mouldy, it was time to move on to that exposed eye socket. And using good old liquid latex and cotton wool, I built around the edge of the eye socket to create that kind of torn skin look. So I just put on a little bit of latex and put some cotton wool over, saturated the cotton wool with the latex and just sculpted it with my handy spatula. I decided to block out my brow. I'm not really sure why because I stick muslin over it anyway, but I did. Anyway, I then decided to move on to the other eye whilst I was waiting for that latex and cotton wool to dry. And I just took a variety of different shades of eyeshadow, deep greys and blacks and that lovely deep night that I love to use and just created a really rough, smoky textured eye and also just define my brows a little and stippled that dark colour down underneath my eye to create a pretty but mouldy effect. Something I never thought you could have both in the same sentence. Anyway, I then put on a little bit of mascara and then moved on to creating that eye socket. So I took a square of muslin and cut it to size and then just simply glued it on with some Prosade if you're using Prosage, you need to allow it to go clear and tacky before you stick anything down. While I was waiting for that to go tacky, I applied some false lashes onto the non-eye socket side. And then I stuck some tape over my eye to keep it shut. I did initially put the muslin straight over without the tape, but I found that it was too tempting to try and open my eye, which was really irritating with the, with the muslin over the top because my eyelashes kept bashing against it. So I decided it was better to stick my eye down with some surgical tape. Make sure you take the tackiness off the tape before you stick it down. Anyway, so I then stuck down the muslin and then started to paint around the outside of that liquid latex and cotton wool with a water-based face paint, just to blend it in with the rest of the face. painted around the muslin and just painted all of that white because this is your area of exposed skull. I then took a dark brown and painted in the eye socket. Now you might wonder why I didn't go straight in with black. This is because I wanted to create a more realistic effect by creating a gradient of colour rather than it being solid black. This gives you a much more realistic look. I then went into the centre of that with black and you can see the kind of effect I'm starting to get. 
Then I decided to move on to painting the outside of that torn skin whilst I was just waiting for that muslin to dry because obviously water-based face paint does take a little bit longer to dry on fabric than on your skin. So I painted a nice pink around that torn skin, blending that out with a fluffy brush as I went. I brought this pink down onto the face to create a nice rotten, torn away skin effect. Then taking some deep brown eyeshadow, I use that around the edge of that torn skin just to start to create some depth and shadow. I then started using different shades of browns to create the shading around the eye socket to make it look more realistic and to stop the edges looking too sudden and sharp. Then with a mixture of yellow, brown and white I started to tint that bone around the eye socket because I thought it looked a bit too white and stark and not realistic. It would look a bit more of a creamy off-white colour especially if you were a mouldy zombie. I also used it to blend around the outside of that eye socket more so that there was a nice gradient from the deep socket to the exposed bone around the edge. And then just deepened up any areas I felt necessary. You can see how that's really working now and really looking a lot more realistic than if you just painted a solid black eye socket. Then using those deeper tones of the water-based face paint, I use those to just deepen up areas around that torn skin to create some texture and interest. sure what to do with my lips so in the end I decided to go with a light pinky tone all over and then using NYX Cherry Skies liquid lipstick I just stippled this around the edge and blended it in with my fingers this gave a nice moldy effect because it's a nice red tone but it does have a purple undertone as well I then used a little bit of Snazaroo Clown White in the center of my lips just to highlight I can't do a look without a nice lip you all know that anyone who follows my channel knows that I then just used a little bit of black face paint and just stippled those on any areas I felt needed a little bit of extra mouldiness. And then I applied my headdress, messed up my hair around the headdress and got some old flowers and a nice veil and you are done. So. Thank you again so much for sticking with me, Bukes. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Comment and let me know below what you think of this video. And ooh, look at my lovely new effects on my editing software. Love you all. Bye.